This video is a continuation of the previous part. Now it's time for us to test the caller ID module that we created earlier. In the picture you can see an illustration of the caller ID module that we will test. The caller ID signal that we will detect comes from the computer's sound card output and will be entered into the caller ID audio input module line. For Arduino fans who are interested in testing system caller ID, I reference one of the posts on forum.arduino.cc. The owner of the post, as seen here. This is the project he made, it looks more complete. The project source code link is included here. The most interesting thing for me is the caller ID generator application. We connect this caller ID detector module to Arduino. This is the power supply connection. And these are the two digital pins that we use. The one to control the enable disable ICHT9032. And the other pin is input to receive serial data from ICHT9032. Now we will upload the sketch program. There are many examples of caller ID sketch programs that you can use. Now we upload. Okay, finish the upload process. Next we connect the audio input jack to the computer's audio output. This is the application we used as the first test. I am very grateful to the creators of this app. Excellent, very good. This application can generate caller ID with SMDF and MDMF formats. Later we will monitor the output on this Arduino serial monitor. Okay, notice on the left this is the caller ID generator or simulator application. And on the right is the HT9032 datasheet. We will see the caller ID data format reference here. For the SDMF caller ID format, the header is code 04. The next data is length information. Next is date and time information. Telephone number information. And the most recent data is checksum to validate the data. We click here to start generating the bitstream, so that the data series appears as shown. And when we send it as a caller ID signal then, you can see the Arduino indicator LED is blinking which indicates the input pin is receiving data. Notice if we use serial monitor. I repeat. Okay, the tool we created is working fine. Now we try to change the date and time information. and we change the number. Okay, all data can be received properly. Very precise. Now we will try caller ID with MDMF format. Pay attention to the following data formats. The header is 80, and then information like this. Take a look when we test the caller ID generator application. Here it appears that there is an additional name column, 
in this case, the name of the owner of the phone. When we generate, this is the header. This is the data packet length information, and some other information, see for yourself. We generate the bitstream. We send the audio signal. Okay, it works. Now it's data caller ID sends name information like this. Now let's try to change the name. Okay, works fine. We're testing changing the phone number now. Perfect. Our caller ID module is working fine. And of course this means this app works well. My best regards for the maker of this application. You can also use other apps for caller ID testing. On this site, we can buy tone encoder components that can generate caller ID signals. This component supports SDMF, MDMF, and RAW formats. We can download the trial here. If we run, it looks like this. We will try to generate the SDMF caller ID format. Take note, here's the phone number. We check the date and time. The date and time are always included in both SDMF and MDMF formats. We start the application. Then we click Generate. Isn't it working? Let's try to change the time information. Take note, no problem, right? Just to do a test or simulation, we can actually use an audio file that has been recorded. And then we just have to play. Here we will try to record the caller ID signal, then we will play for testing. First, we will record the signal in SDMF format, then we also record the MDMF format. Okay, now we have two voice recordings containing sample caller ID signals. This is SDMF. And this is MDMF. When we record play, data can be received well. Now let's play this one.
perfect, isn't it? This is of course just a very simple test of the caller ID receiver module. If it is developed further, maybe we can make things more exciting, of course. Thus this video I present, may be useful.